and uh, hello everyone. We're very happy to see you here at our webinar. Uh, our webinar is going to be dedicated to training, handbooks, logbooks, and uh, the outcome of everyone, um, um, how to make exchange of everyone oriented. And Hermania, next slide, please. Um, here we are, uh, people from uh, different parts of the world ready to introduce, speak to you. And Hermania Munoz from uh, uh, the Nori from IMPPI Ecuador, um, Jorgas Atanasakis, uh, Neo of Helmsic, Greece. Uh, hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, hello. Uh, <laughs> Laura Lit, uh, Neo in of IFMC Poland. Laura. Um, and uh, Peter uh, uh, Scori is the member from HCCM Russia, unfortunately cannot be present right now, but uh, uh, he also contributed to this um, uh, webinar. And we also have me, Tanya Zebro, a school period for Europe. And next slide, please. Uh, the plan of our webinar. Uh, is going to be the following. We're going to uh, discuss the upon arrival training and uh, how to make it perfect in the very beginning. Then we go uh, to handbooks, books, um, go deep into outcome based exchanges. And then there will be uh, time for questions and answers. And you can ask your questions uh, whenever you uh, want during the webinar. So um, we're very happy you all, and let's start. I'm passing my word to uh, Laura now uh, to continue about upon arrival training. Laura, unmute yourself. Wait, wait, you're Laura. You are muted. Yay. Is it fine? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, my name is Laura and I'm here to deliver to you the few words about the up and arrival training. And uh, next slide, please. So up and arrival training, as its name says, uh, is a training which basically needs to be done strictly upon arrival or in the very beginning of the exchange. And what I really mean by this is it should be really done uh, in the very first week of the exchange. Uh, it is to um, serve as a solid introduction into the host country's way of approaching medicine and healthcare. And its other aim is um, to prevent the culture shock uh, by explaining the country's rules, traditions and cultural norms. Next, please. OK, so your incomings are almost there, but you haven't prepared the up and arrival training yet. And we are here to help you. So let's go with the next slide, please. OK, uh, so why do we actually care to uh, have upon arrival training. So its basic objective is basically to help the student uh, adapt to the new culture. And it's also important to empower the student with knowledge which enables uh, integration to new healthcare system with ease. And it's also important to help the incoming to be prepared for bringing um, both the skills and knowledge uh, back to their home country. Uh, it's crucial to set the rules in the beginning of the exchange so the incomings and uh, know what to expect and also to um, to explain the expectations of each other and uh, like setting clear expectations might be really useful um, for future evaluation process as well. And then we need to keep in mind that um, the team of incomings is an intercultural team and we need to try our best to create a friendly environment which will enable uh, the incoming students um, to share their knowledge and experiences throughout the exchange process. Next, please. Okay, um, so um, since today's day is the day of academic quality, I just wanted to explain uh, briefly what academic quality is. And so basically it's any activity or process that tends 
the exchange into an academic or uh, educational opportunity. Um, so, uh, since our webinar is on upon arrival training and uh, handbook, notebook, and outcomes, I really wanted to stress here that all of these elements uh, constitute an academic quality. Next, please. Okay, so it's basically you planning organization of upon arrival training. Uh, so we are here to help you with the logistics. Next, please. Okay, um, so we have a couple of elements which really need to be taken into consideration while uh, planning up and rival training. So, as I mentioned before, uh, we really need to do this in the very beginning of the exchange, meaning during the first seven days of the exchange. And um, you might also want to organize your UAT on national or local level. Um, I believe that national level is quite a good solution um, if you have, let's say, three or four LCs, so you're not a really big MO, and it's easy to uh, for the incomings to get, let's say, to the capital. Um, but usually UAT is organized um, on the local level. Um, also, if you have, let's say, two or three incoming students and not really Really, um, experienced local exchange team, uh, it might be good to organize it, uh, organize the online version of UAT, and it's also fine. Um, when it comes to the location, um, so you might either think of a um, bigger congress center or just an affiliated um, university building. And then you really need to remember that you are not alone while preparing the upon arrival training. And if you don't really feel uh, sure about some of the elements, some trainings or anything, you can always ask um, other standing committees members or the training division for help. And uh, then promotion. So basically, I think all the people uh, who uh, have some experience in working with incomings do know that the incomings need to be reminded of everything a couple of times so that they can properly remember. So when it comes to promotion, I would organize a Facebook event and I would uh, write a few times about the up and arrival training on Facebook group or WhatsApp group, whatever group you are using, and also ask the contact persons um, to remind uh, the incoming students. And finances. Um, upon arrival training is supposed to be kind of low budget uh, training, so you don't really need much for it. Actually, you can do this almost for free. Um, yeah. And then the OC. Uh, when it comes to OC, it is good to have one uh, when you are organizing something on the national level. So basically person responsible for registration, covering transport, uh, trainings, agenda, and so on and so on. So it's really important that everyone knows what he or she is responsible for. And so you can also have a small working group, uh, organize a call uh, for a small working group um, working strictly on upon arrival training with you. Okay, next please. Okay, um, so we are going to discuss the context of upon arrival training. Next please. Okay, so um, the first thing is introduction to the host country. So really basic things uh, which are really important for the survival minimum of the incoming. Uh, you need to discuss the language, um, but not only your native language, but also um, possibility for the incoming student to communicate in English or any other languages being used in the country. So basically you might tell the student whether it is possible to communicate with everybody um, in English or whether it is just possible with well-educated people or young people. I think it's really important that um, they know what they might expect in this field then social and cultural norms, uh, laws and fines. So, for example, uh, here in Poland, we always tell our incoming students that they can't drink alcohol in public places. It's really serious mm -hmm. and, yeah, and they really need to uh, beware because otherwise they are really disappointed with big fines. And uh, then public transportation. Um, so, you need to tell the student how to commit on the baby uh, on a daily basis, uh, you need to tell the incoming student whether um, he or she, as an international student, uh, have discounts or not. Yeah. 
an entire list of emergency contacts and some technical moments. So um, it is really important that you tell the student everything they might need, like where's the nearby shop, whether the dormitory has laundry or not, and so on. Lodging, boarding, and finally, healthcare and medical education system, just briefly, so they are informed about that. Okay, next please. Okay, and introduction to the host population. Um, some epidemiology statistics might be shared, uh, public health initiatives being currently a um, hot topic. Then populations at risk and their epidemiology, you can always ask um, the SCOF or SCORA members uh, to help you with that. And obviously, um, the research in the host country and the achievements um, done in the host country. Yeah. Next, please. Okay, introduction to clerkship in the host country. Um, exchange conditions. So obviously our incoming students um, are supposed to have gone through it a couple of times, uh, yet it's always good uh, if you remind them um, that they need to be present um, particular, uh, that they need to have particular frequency um, on their classes, uh, what they really need to do apart from it, let's say like filling in the, uh, the handbook log book and so on. So basically the most important things from the exchange conditions. Expectations and responsibilities for clerks in the host country and if you have any preclinical students it's really important um, to mention uh, separately their expectations and responsibilities. Ethical considerations during the clerkship and patient management specific for the hosting country. Next please. Okay, so uh, now uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, another topic to be talked uh, about in these UATs is the uh, introduction to the research. Uh, may we start with generalities? Uh, as Laura mentioned, the exchange conditions should be reminded to, uh, to the incomings uh, because uh, some projects, for example, are going to have some special remarks to be talked about. Uh, also, bioethics bio within exchanges. Uh, this topic uh, could be held uh, within uh, bioethical bio uh, cases or hypothetical uh, situations in which we prepare the incomings to, to develop an analyzing um, pos position in order to see how would they pro pro proceed if they, if they fa face the situation we are explaining to them also to uh, using the ABCD uh, about the, the bio, bioethics principles. Um, different levels and types of research labs. Uh, this, to this topic is very necessary to be talked about because there are some countries that are not going to, to, to have the same research uh, lab structure that, uh, the, uh, that the sending country has. So it's important uh, to remind them about uh, the biosecurity uh, special remarks, if necessary. If you are holding uh, a special group of incomings in a month uh, that is, for example, for, uh, you, that you are receiving maybe four or five incomings, uh, you should uh, focus on their needs. Uh, you should focus on their project uh, form and special remarks. Uh, on the project forms um, necessities so that you can explain this. Uh, about expectations and duties, uh, this is basically the responsibilities that they have within their uh, research uh, project experience uh, when in the lab or in the community or in the research center. Uh, it's important to talk about in uh, UIT about the communication guidelines in, inside the lab and the research center who to contact with, uh, how the teacher works, uh, the schedule that is set uh, before they arrive. Uh, also, um, uh, you, sh uh, you should work with the, with the lawyers and the, and, and the national exchange team so that you can uh, summarize the legal documents, documents used in the lab or maybe uh, to show them the, the, the papers and the guidelines or, or the protocols that they should uh, they should follow before they start their their exchange and uh, the last thing to uh, to remember the, the incoming is uh, the outcomes expected and set by the tutor 
For example, when when they are applying to the uh, to the research project, they are going to read about the the research project form expectation that are set by the tutor. So we should motivate them to follow the the rules, to to start thinking on how they are going to start the the, the outcomes that that is uh, that are expected from from them, and that's everything. So. Okay, so I'm coming back with a um, possible list of speakers and facilitators. Uh, obviously, Leos and Loris are the people uh, being mostly engaged um, in up and rival training, and, uh, but you can also ask the exchange trainers for help uh, if you have some in your NMO and if they are available, obviously. Uh, you can also uh, ask the general trainers, especially if you don't have exchange trainers in your NMO um, or also like human rights trainers or any other kind of trainers uh, you might wish and then external speakers so any professor um, having a lecture on important epidemiology problems uh, or any other thing related to the hosting country and um, a nice idea is to invite the former outgoing in order uh, to share his or her experience um, when it comes to exchange uh, in order to have him or her answering the um, incoming uh, question. And so you actually may also uh, have an online meeting with uh, the former incoming um, telling uh, the students about, um, about his or her experience um, in the LC. Okay, next please. Okay, um, so I wanted to mention briefly the examples of up and arrival training and I'm going to discuss uh, the one of SISM Italy. Um, and when it comes to IFMSA Quebec and IFMSA Poland, uh, you will be able to find the links to the presentations uh, in the final outline. So right now, uh, I'm only discussing uh, SISM Italy. Um, so uh, they actually have very elaborate um, up and arrival training and they focus on team building. Uh, they are creating basically the team of incoming students um, and they also let discover each other, um, each other's culture so that they get to know the Italian culture, but also they get to know each other's culture. And they obviously uh, introduce the elements of trainings, uh, such as introduction to exchange, the global health, um, the ethics in exchanges and the intercultural learning. Um, it has been already mentioned um, on the PDT webinar, like this training part, and I invite you to follow this one uh, in order to get more idea about the trainings elements. Um, okay, and when it comes to the logistics and organization, so um, they basically decide date and place, um, and they have set um, the thing that the trainer must be the one who's organizing the up and arrival training, and it goes quite well. And the trainer, the Leo Lori, uh, sent the outline uh, seven days before the training. Um, yeah, and then the new in new out Nori um, and uh, the capacity building coordinator are discussing it with uh, each other and improving together, which is kind of a time-consuming process, but it goes uh, out really well. Okay, and it is really important that not formal education is being used so that the incomings are not getting like bored or even threatened. Um, nice idea which has been introduced in CISM Italy is a goodbye training. Uh, so it basically is um, about the same things which have been mentioned in upon arrival training, but actually um, the incomings um, compare how much they have learned during the clerkship and also they try to overcome the stereotypes which they used to think were true about uh, each other's country and also Italy. Okay, and then um, they do have kind of homework uh, so that um, the incomings are assigned um, specific um, elements uh, of the healthcare system. Um, I mean, of the Italian healthcare system, then try to collect some information to take a deep look at it. And then uh, they compare it with their um, own um, their own healthcare system and then share it on the goodbye training, which I think is pretty nice. Okay, that's it. The next slide, please.
Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I want to just mention briefly a few things for you, just um, just a take home message. Um, so the upon arrival training should really take part in the very beginning of the exchange because otherwise it doesn't really make sense if you organize it in the second or the third week. Uh, then you might also want to remember that uh, you might always ask for help um, at any other uh, trainer or standing committee member. And you shouldn't really restrict the up and arrival training um, into introduction to the host country, but also try to add other elements. And finally, you really need to create the outline of the up and arrival training uh, to have the timeline, uh, the logistics part, and it's helpful not only for you to organize uh, to have it organized, but also like to pass to the future generations so that up and arrival training might be constantly improved. Okay. Okay. So uh, now I would like you uh, to say that uh, you should remember that you should always focus on your target target population for example if you are not able to 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 organize a national uat you can all, always uh, prepare a video for example or do it online and you can sh and you can call the uh, the incomings uh, for example uh, uh, throughout a, a hangout also about what laura said uh, regarding a standing committee's collaboration i would like to share with you some examples that uh, can be mentioned within this uh, with these UATs, uh, you should apply collaboration with other committees, and here are the following topics. Uh, with SCOMI, you can you can talk about the types of teaching and learning in the in the hosting country, uh, or also about medical skills. Um, it can include uh, reviewing the research methodology, uh, data processing, uh, basic first aid, clinical history, sem semiology, patient approaching. Uh, within the scope, you can talk about the incidence of communicable diseases and their prevention, vaccines in the hosting country, the interaction between global health, public health. You can remark the difference between these definitions and international health. With the SCORA, you can talk about the access to maternal health, uh, safe, safe abortion in the country, uh, or gender specific issues, uh, may, maybe obstetric violence uh, situation. Also about the uh, the, uh, the law framework and the accessibility of contraceptive methods and prevention of STDs. And within a scope, you can talk about the situation of migrants and refugees in the hosting country, uh, whether the news talking about uh, the gender situation, the current situation, and the determinants of health that could be very important to to talk to the comments. So he is uh, so he recognizes what the situation is in the in the hosting country. Thank you very much, girls. Now, time for Georges to step in. Hello, everybody. So now it's about time to talk about the Handbook Logbook, which is also an important step of academic quality. Next slide, please. Uh, so first of all, uh, both Handbook and Logbook are really important for the exchange. Not only they are one of the nine steps of academic quality, but also it's the gold guarantee of getting a high level of the academic quality. In addition, it's a way to evaluate the quality of the clerkship during the exchange and of course for the tutor to evaluate the student's performance during that month. It's also a useful tool in order to get recognition of the clerkship or uh, the research project from the home university and make it in, become a part of the medical curriculum. And finally, according to SCOPI and SCORE regulations, uh, we are going to refer uh, on that, on the SCOPI uh, certificate, on, the, on, on that. Uh, it's mandatory to have them filled in order to receive the official uh, certificate for the of the program for both SCOPI and SCORE. Next slide, please. So let's see now what exactly they include. So on this slide on, and on the next slides, we will see some screenshots of both SCOPI and SCORE uh, on SCOPI Handbook and SCORE Logbook. On the front page, we can see on uh, the student's handbook for SCOPI that some general details of the student. On the other hand, on SCORI logbook, we can see the table of uh, the contents of, uh, of it. Next slide, please. 
as we can see here in Scopy, we have some different versions of the student's uh, handbook. These uh, versions uh, can be on language or uh, on the department. For the language, we have three different ones. We have a, a Spanish one, a French one, and a Portuguese one. On the other hand, about uh, departments, we have uh, some, spe uh, some specific for anesthesiology, family medicine, obstetrics, gynecology, neurology, infectious diseases, pediatrics, and emergency medicine. Most of them are endorsed by some world federations, and uh, such an example that I can give now, it's about anesthesiology, which is approved from the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, of also known as uh, WFSA. Next slide, please. Okay, so within scoring, we also have different versions uh, of the logbook. Uh, for example, this, uh, as, a, as you just said, uh, this is a kind of personal journal uh, where the students uh, write down all the information regarding the executed activities during their exchange and tutors comments on their performance feed. But for example, we have the, the four week exchange logbook where there is a regular assessment each two weeks with the feedback of the tutor and the student's expectation at the beginning of the, of the research in, in order to see how he is performing, uh, what goals is, is the student reaching. And in the eight week uh, exchange logbook, there is going to be the, the regular assessment, but the, there is going to be a little bit more specific because it's, it's almost a two month exchange. So the, the regular assessment is going to be more strict per se. So on the next pages of the student's handbook, we can see a table where the student writes down exactly the dates that he ha or she has attended uh, at the clerkship and also what skills he gained uh, during every day. At the end of uh, the two weeks, of the first two weeks and the second two weeks of the clerkship, the tutor has to check whether it's completed uh, uh, appropriately and he, can, and he signs the student's handbook. For score, it's the same, but the time is divided in weeks. So the, the student is writing down every week what he, he or she has, um, what he gained, what skills he gained during the first week, the second week, etc. And the, at the end, the tutor is signing uh, the student's logbook for the first two weeks and the second two weeks. Next slide, please. So, and the next on the uh, next pages too, we can see that uh, there are some uh, checklists on the student's handbook with with all the with all the skills that the, the students need to get, need to gain during his exchange. Uh, there are two checklists: one for clinical rotations like internal medicine or cardiology, and one for surgical rotations like uh, uh, general surgery or orthopedics, etc. For uh, scoring, uh, there is not exactly any specific checklist, so the student just writes down the skills that he gained, the research skills that he gained uh, during uh, this month of exchange. But on the other hand, in the, in the checklist, the, uh, the student ticks every, every skill that he gained uh, every day. Next slide, please. On the, last, on the last pages of both student's handbook and logbook, we can see that the student gives feedback to the department and he says, he gives uh, some, com some comments about the experience of the clerkship, what he gained or what he would like to see different. And on the other hand, the tutor is to evaluate the student's performance during this month, during the four weeks of the clerkship, and they both leave comments for the program and uh, so that they, they are able to improve some future clerkships. So the next time that uh, this department is going to host an incoming, in order to improve the academic quality of the program. Next slide, please. So, now let's talk about uh, the procedure that we need as exchange officers, but also the students and all the responsible people need to follow in order to complete the student's handbook or logbook. Before the exchange, 
the Leo or the Lori has to send in an electronic form in a PDF uh, the student's handbook or logbook to the student. The student has to print it, take the printed one, go to the dean or the professor of the home university, make him sign it, receives his tasks, his tasks from the dean or the professor that he has to do during his exchanges and make a plan for, uh, for this clerkship and also set his additional learning objectives uh, for the clerkship. Next uh, slide, please. On the first day of the exchange, the student meets, needs to meet with his tutor in order to discuss the obligations of the student during the clerkship and the tasks that, the tasks that he needs to do. Every day, they both complete the tasks that have been done during that day and the hours that have been attended um, every, on the specific day and every two every two weeks the tutor signs um, the handbook in the appropriate page at the end of the exchange the tutor has to complete his evaluation for the student to get uh, in order in addition to get sure that the student has completed correctly the checklist and then he has to leave his comments the student on the other hand as we said before has to write his final comments and give his feedback uh, on the department and uh, on the tutor. Next slide, please. After the exchange, the student has to go back to the dean of the home university, give the student's handbook uh, to him so that the dean or the professor checks whether the student has achieved all the tasks that he has done and get the final signature of him. Uh, in order, to, after receiving the signature, his clerkship is officially recognized. Uh, maybe, but maybe uh, there is an, uh, one extra pro procedure, but this depends on the home university and not exactly on IFMC. Next slide, please. So, uh, as a result, we can see that the responsible people are the student, as he has to complete it properly and follow, meet all the regulations in order to get his exchange recognized and get the official uh, IFMSA Scopy or score certificate. The tutor, on the other hand, because he needs to check whether the student has completed the student's handbook and in order to get sure that he completes it in order to make the academic quality of the program much better. On the other hand, the Leor the Lori has to monitor whether the student and the tutor are filling it properly. And finally, the dean is the first and the last person to check the, uh, this document in order to make the clerkship of the student officially recognized after the end of the exchange. Next slide, please. Let's uh, finally say the benefits of the handbook and the logbook. The student at first is going to get his clerkship officially recognized, as, as we said before. In addition, he's going to receive the official uh, uh, certificate of the program. And not only that, but also he's going to gain more and more skills by evaluating, evaluating himself um, um, every day and uh, in addition he's going to evaluate his development in, a academ in an academic level during this month of exchanges of uh, his exchange. Next slide please. For the tutors now first of all uh, they will be able to externalize their work to other universities as the dean of the home university he is going to receive the student's handbook and he will see that what work is being done on the hosting uh, hospital and the hosting department in addition they will be able to assess easier the student and of course they will be able to understand uh, much better the problems that might exist and improve them so that he they are able to improve the academic quality in their department for future exchanges of course, they will be able to make a plan with the student on the skills that uh, the second needs to learn during the four weeks. And finally, they, uh, they might get uh, the tutor certificate at the end of the exchange. Uh, this one is a certificate that it's being signed from uh, the hosting Leo or Neo. 
and uh, they certify that uh, this uh, specific professor was a tutor for our program for some for the specific month we don't need to forget that uh, they will finally be able to practice more their english and especially the use of the medical terminology in english on the other hand the leos and the loris will also have some benefits they are going to monitor easier whether the students are attending the clerkship or not, and thus they will be able to give the certificate according to scope and score regulations only to the students who attended the appropriate days, uh, uh, the appropriate days at the hospital. In addition, they will be able to improve the academic quality in their local committee as they will, be able, they will know uh, which department um, uh, has a high level of academic quality or which one doesn't have much high and they will make a plan to improve it in this specific department. And they will be able to communicate easier with their tutors. Last but not least, they will find it easier to help, the, help their outgoings achieve recognition of their clerkship after, at the end of the exchange. Next slide, please. Let's talk about now a little bit about uh, the Scopy and the Scholar Certificate because these documents are also important uh, for our program. According to Scopy and Scholar regulations, in order for a student to receive uh, the official FMSA Scopy Exchange Certificate or Scholar Exchange Certificate, they need to follow these, require, uh, these uh, requirements. First of all, to have the student's handbook or logbook uh, completed. They need to meet the exchange conditions uh, of the hosting country. In addition, they need to, uh, to fill the, the official evaluation form uh, of the program in the IFMSA database, which is open uh, after the third week of the exchange of the student. And finally, uh, the student needs to attend uh, at least 80% of the program of the clerkship uh, in both scope and scoring, which means 80% uh, of the working days at the hospital. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, let's, uh, let us give you some useful tips on how to, comp to fill these documents. First of all, the document uh, needs to be uh, clear, which means that uh, the, student, the Lee or the Lori needs to use clear letters and not give it to um, uh, not give it to the tutor to sign it in a bad with a bad appearance. When it comes about the name of the student, uh, you, we need to write the full name of the student as written as written in the passport. Here is a trap because uh, usually in many NMOs. The, 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 the exchange students don't write in their AF all their names that they might, ha might have, but maybe one of their names and one of their surnames. But finally, they might have two or three names and two or three surnames. So you, we need to be careful to check the card of, open the card of documents, check the passport and write the name as written in the passport. Regarding the tutor, we need to be careful to write the correct position in the university. For example, if he's um, a professor, we need to write Professor uh, George Green. If he's associate professor, etc., and avoid writing like Mr., Mrs., and uh, po and uh, position adjectives like that. We need also to be careful to write the full name as written in the passport and avoid some uh, nicknames or some other names that they might use. Um, on their daily life. And finally, uh, uh, the local officers we need to get sure that all parts of the Scopy certificate are signed, uh, both the tutor, both the Sendic Leo or Neo, and finally the hosting Neo or Leo. In order to have, in order to be valid, uh, in order for the certificate to be valid, we need to have all these uh, signatures, the three signatures. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we are going to talk about a little bit about the outcomes uh, in exchanges. Uh, this topic uh, represents the, the, uh, the IFMSA exchange uh, vision 
because uh, uh, we have found in this scoping and scoring programs uh, educational activities and learning opportunities at its core. So it's important to, to give it a, a special remark about why we should focus and direct our efforts and our teaching skills within the exchanges program in order to get the better outcomes in exchanges and to remind the income to, to, to do what are their responsibilities and what is expected from them at the end of their exchange. Okay, so why the, why the outcomes are important? Important. Uh, we have talked about academic quality and how uh, UIT educational activities and uh, exchange per se is important, increasing the academic quality rates, uh, in, uh, improving our evaluation form statistics. Also, it leads uh, to recognition of exchanges. If you, uh, if the incoming is is getting back to the sending country. Uh, he or she would like to, to get a recognition of the exchange to show the dean, the tutor, the, the professor what he or she has done throughout the, the four or eight weeks of the exchange. Also, it enriches a student as a person and as a future health professional. And this, uh, and this is how we can talk about the, the SCOPI and SCORI outcomes at its core, because we are developing in some way uh, a student that is going to be culturally sensible to the inequities and the difference uh, among healthcare systems all around the world, and especially comparing the, the hosting country healthcare system, the, the research special remarks to the, to, the sending, uh, to the sending country. So here are some, uh, some axes that are, that are mentioned in the learning and the knowledge acquisition process that are remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So how can we apply this, uh, this access to the, to the whole um, uh, research process and how we fulfill those outcomes? Is that, for example, in the remember, in the remember access, uh, it's, it's about retrieving relevant knowledge from long-term memory, for example, recall how to perform a certain process. Also identify strategies for retaining information, how we are improving those skills as self uh, and auto evaluation uh, during and after the exchange. In the understand access, we can clarify some, uh, um, for example, predict one's response to cultural shock, how we are going to manage. We can summarize the features that we have seen so far uh, during our first week, uh, our first weeks of the exchange, when applying, we can uh, carry out some tests, uh, some samples. We can talk about the 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 patient approach and what techniques we are using, what are our strengths, uh, how we can work in a, in a better way, how can we communicate and strengthen the the connection with our tutor. When analyzing, we can uh, we can plast a conceptual framework. For example, integrating uh, the compliance with regulations. Also, uh, stop uh, having some uh, biases. We 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 start to think in an objective way. And when evaluating, we can determine determine the relevance of the results that we have uh, that we have learned uh, regarding our exchange experience. In, Within our clerkship or our research uh, or research project uh, internships. So, the last one is the most important. It represents the what, why is this a fulfilling experience? Why, uh, why we are going to take profit and we are going to present our outcome after the exchange? And it's about creating. Uh, it, it, it is that we can put the elements together to form a coherent whole, reorganizing into a new pattern of a structure that can be used to be presented, for example, to design an efficient project workload and to create uh, a learning portfolio that may be useful for the future uh, so that we can, we can go back and see how, how, we, how we advance from the beginning, from the starting point, 
and throughout the moment that is uh, where the when the exchange is ending. So uh, I'm going to talk about the outcomes in exchanges, the specific outcomes within a scoring. We, uh, when, when looking for a project form or when filling it or when a student wants to, wants to select um, a research project, there is a section when, when there is what is expected from the student. There are some special remarks that are, that are said from the tutor or also we can motivate them uh, as, as national officers or as lawyers in order to, to get these outcomes. For example, the research report the poster, the presentation, also to, to elaborate an abstract that can be presented in, in future uh, conventions. We can have uh, online workshops. Um, the, also, we can summarize articles on the area of the research. Before the starting uh, even a, a research exchange, we have to, to be prepared for the topic that we are going to to, that we are that the send, that the hosting country is suffering, so that we can it can lead to do a student report. Uh, thank you. And uh, for Scopy, we also have an, uh, some examples of uh, outcomes, which can be clinical case report, which I'm going to tell uh, right now a bit more about. Uh, then uh, you can recommend to your incomings or goings to kind of create a disease profile. Especially, it can be. Uh, smart if a student is going to the place with uh, where uh, with endemic diseases and uh, um, by studying this disease by himself uh, during the exchange he can he or she can enlarge his knowledges and enrich his knowledge his or her knowledges um, also uh, as an outcome can be advice to prepare the uh, healthcare system comparison report so um, uh, this is uh, uh, the global, I would say this is the global health approach. So uh, when you recommend to your incoming or outgoing to think deeper about the health, different healthcare systems uh, in the countries and uh, talk to the other incomings uh, in his group, uh, his or her group, uh, this can figure the mind of the student uh, in the way that he will start to act, uh, to think more globally. Uh, and uh, the general student report, which is uh, both appealing to Scopi and Scori, which we can, uh, which we will also explain a bit more in the end. Next slide, please. Uh, so, clinical case report. This is actually a new uh, initiative in Scopi, and uh, uh, soon it will be shared uh, with news through the uh, news server. We have a uh, discussion for during the March meeting. Uh, at one of the sessions and uh, uh, with the, the news uh, from different countries of the world, we came up with a kind of idea how the clinical case report should look like. Uh, so this is uh, something new and this is uh, something which, uh, as we hope, will increase the academic quality of our exchange even more so. What will this clinical case report look like? Next slide, please. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. As we have agreed, uh the following uh the following items uh, should be included in the clinical case report uh so uh we have discussed uh, if it's better to uh gather some different reports of different patients or if it's better to create one report of uh, one patient but this report should be very um detail detailed uh, and we have uh, to the conclusion that uh, possibly the second option is better. So uh, what can we find uh, or what can we recommend the student to uh, uh, use in this uh, clinical case report? So the first item is uh, demographic information about the patients. So uh, general like age, gender, uh, family situation, uh, education, uh, work, and uh, etc. Uh, the next point is general complaints uh, about whichever disease he or she is um, the uh, next uh, uh, I, uh, the next um, uh, thing is the story of the patient uh, and in this uh, at this moment we recommend to emphasize the global health issues that may uh, in the uh, history of a patient. So we start with a general anamnesis, uh, where he or she was born, where they grew up, uh, where uh, studied, uh, where, where, where they, uh, do they live, 
Um, and then we go deeper into habits. So uh, we try to discover the social determinants of health. If the patient is smoking, if he or she, uh, what, it, what is the patient eating and what is doing generally, what is the job. Um, and then the uh, then uh, the story of the patient uh, unit is finished, and then we go to the physical examination. So we describe everything. Uh, uh, so we we can to describe everything that he or she did uh, with this patient, uh, which uh, physical examinations did he um, or she do, and what was found during this. Uh, then we recommend to mention all the investigations uh, and the results of those investigations. Uh, then which management uh, was performed to the patient, uh, everything including the uh, hospital regime and like uh, when, like uh, how is uh, the patient treated in the wards, uh, including if he or she is first in the ward and whatever is done. So uh, whatever interesting for the student to, uh, to reread in the future or whatever can be uh, interesting for his uh, tutors in uh, his own, his or her own country uh, to find out about. Uh, and then the outcome. So there is so of the treatment of the patient. Uh, did the patient recover uh, or uh, did he or she uh, go home uh, with recommendations to come back at a period? Uh, is he um, is the patient served by the doctors or not? Uh, and uh, uh, then recommendations, which means which recommend given by the tutor, uh, sorry, by the uh, treating doctor to the patient. Uh, so at this point, it, it is important to discuss uh, with the tutor in the hospital uh, about this patient as well. So the student is. Uh, um, expected to discuss this with the tutor uh, deeply. Um, uh, the next, uh, uh, yeah, the next slide, please. Uh, thank you. And uh, the most important part which, which to be included in a clinical case report is the final one. And here in the end, we um, uh, propose to include the following ones. Uh, tips on how uh, the student deals with the patient uh, what was his difficulties that you know, he or she had to uh, struggle, what was different from uh, his or her own uh, So for example, cultural differences, language differences, um, maybe some special approach was needed to communicate with the patient, um, or was the, the communication done together with the tutor, or uh, could the student probably uh, communicate with the patient on his or her own? Um, uh, which special phrases maybe was needed to be used in communication with the patient, etc. So everything that can be uh, interested and uh, unusual for the student who is going for an exchange. Uh, the medical challenges, uh, if they were faced during the exchange, so uh, during um, the, praxi, uh, the practice uh, internship of the student in the hospital during his or her rotations, so, uh, like, uh, how was the, for example, how was the general uh, communication with the staff, with the options, uh, what are the rules of the hospital, and uh, the kind of information like this. And in the very end, we uh, um, propose to write the general impression of the student. Uh, how did he feel? Uh, did he, he or she feel cool? Uh, like uh, when was the moment, uh, if uh, at some point, if maybe in the very beginning it felt a uh, bit uh, what changed the mind of the uh, student, when uh, did it become better, and so on. So that is it for clinical case report, I guess. Okay, so now regarding scientific outcomes within a research exchange, uh, we can talk about the, the scientific report uh, we have found it as as the as its card as uh, as a document that the student can fill in and can prepare so that he summarizes the research experience and all that uh, that the student uh, has learned about this is a document that describes the process the progress the results uh, of the technical or maybe the scientific research and also the state of, of 
of a scientific research problem or hypothesis. So it may also include recommendations and conclusions of the, of the research. So uh, we have talked about the types of scientific outcomes uh, that are the poster, the oral presentation, the report, the abstract. Uh, we should motivate the student to present it at the end of the of the age of the exchange uh, so that he uh, besides of, of of sharing the experience he can also share information he can also share what uh, what uh, he was he was learning at, uh, during this four or eight weeks also uh, we should teach them what are the elements that this scientific report can have such as title page the table of contents the abstract an introduction, uh, the student may explain what were the materials and the methods that were used there. If there was a, a discussion a discussion within the, the results and also the conclusion and the reference that, that were used here. So now, why this is important? Uh, when talking about academic quality, we are talking about uh, the knowledge acquisition of the student, why this exchange experience was important. So this is a communication tool that can that could also combine a verbal presentation with a visual uh, support if we want to to take it to a scientific poster. Uh, it explains to the to the viewer why the student did it, how they did it, uh, what they did, and what they learned from doing it. So before writing. Uh, the student may be aware about what do he or she wa uh, want uh, to the people to remember from the scientific outcome. Uh, maybe if, if it's a scientific poster, in uh, visual tools might be used uh, so that it could be more a, a more attractive presentation. When writing a scientific a scientific or scientific poster or a scientific report, it should be organized. It should be legible, it should be readable, succinct, and also attractive. So people don't get bored, so it, it comes as a more attractive um, experience outcome. So uh, there's, there's, a, there's a saying that goes like, it takes intelligence, even brilliance, to condensate and focus information into a clear, simple presentation that will be read and remembered. So those bullet points should be uh, should be remembered by the students. So the scientific outcome is presented in a in a very uh, legible way that don't make it too full. Uh, a lot of text make it hard to read. Also, uh, all text and the charts that are written down there uh, should have only essential information. This information uh, that is present in the text should not be uh, re uh, represent represented again on, on, on charts so that you don't overload uh, the, the lecture. So if possible, use uh, charts, images, and photographies that were collected during your, your research exchange. OK. So now, uh, regarding the report of the exchange, uh, we are going to talk about how uh, it, it is done, who are the responsibles of it, and how uh, you can find them in, in improve academic quality within your NMO exchanges program. Okay, so the report of the exchange uh, should contain the cultural experience. The global health value of the experience uh, would uh, did this experience was useful for you to become a, a culturally sensible student uh, regarding the inequities in healthcare systems? Um, did this experience uh, was useful for you to create new strategies and elaborate new protocols to be used and, and also to, to keep on working in that topic in your, in your hosting, in your sending country? Also, the social part is important. It can be it can be combined with the cultural experience as well. Tips and tricks for yourself that that you that you must come up with uh, after your your exchange experience is it is uh, it is secondary to a to a auto evaluation of what were your 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 achievement goals. What did you reach during these four weeks? Tips for future generations, you can do it uh, 
uh, maybe throughout uh, testimonies, maybe throughout videos, so that you can motivate uh, other students to be part of this experience. But not, not only that, but also uh, to empower them to, to create new strategies and to use all the, all the tools that were implemented during the, the 4 or 8 exchange. And finally, if, uh, whatever you want to to report in this in this in this in this outcome, so uh, so all the information that you believe it's necessary to be talked about and to be shared with all the people that that are going to read. So national officers uh, uh, collect the reports from their from their students, what they present to them. And, and we, with our username and our, and our password in the IFMSA database, add them in, in here in the student report section. You are going to, to find the name, the sending NMO, the sending local committee, the hosting NMO, and the hosting local committee, what was the month of the year which the exchange was held, and, and all the information. So you can use it la as as a guidelines in order to complete them here are uh, here is a you have to be aware that the report uh, has a name the link to upload a document it's better to upload it in pdf version this uh, also the 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 data about the sending and hosting animals and local committees the amount of the exchange the year of the exchange uh, you can also write down uh, special remarks in the document that uh, that you may think that are not are not involved in this in this section. Okay, so when can the outcomes be analyzed? Um, it's important to 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 analyze the outcomes uh, in order to improve our not only our statistics but also to to improve our strategies that are being used in the exchange program after coming back you may have a small conference of all the outgoings uh, you can have them as speakers so that they can tell about uh, their clerkship or the or the research project that they were uh, that they were into also possible contact persons in order to share their experience maybe develop a contact person one-on-one -on -one, what are the tips and tricks what are the recommendations also the the outgoings why they should be prepared or what was the experience that they that they had uh, after uploading to the database uh, you can create an analysis and recommendations of what difference have you found uh, in this in these outcomes and how they can be improved also if there is a lack of information you should recommend it or or you should for example take it as, as guidelines and start developing yours also creating the bullet or journal at the local and national level this is going to be a very useful tool so you can uh, assure handover and continuity with the within these educational activities uh, in, in 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 future in future in future exchanges also publishing it in scientific journals uh, uh, in different countries there are there are many a blogs, for example, or online scientific journals uh, where people share their experience so that you you don't wait until the exchange week to to share, for example, all the, the testimonies and experience and you and you use these tools. And also, for example, uh, our our magazines such as MSI, where we can talk about uh, our experience, why we recommended and also we can give special remarks about the current situation with some special exchange programs that are developed in, in specific countries about uh, some exchange conditions and how they, they should be approached. Uh, thank you, dear. Yes, the last phrase was about MSI, the Medical Student International. Sorry, Hermania, you... Uh, so I will just repeat it. So Medical Student International is the magazine, the uh, I'm gonna say official magazine where you can uh, send the uh, abstracts as well. And yeah, thank you. And present uh, uh, them. And so present your experience to all the other 
uh, students who will ever go to the exchange or just share your rinse with everyone in this specific uh, part. So you can find the SCOPI and, and, or, uh, and SCORI related parts in the Medical Students International Journal. Thank you. And next slide. Um, so uh, here we are almost at the end of our webinar. Uh, just to read, uh, what do you have to uh, think about? Uh, so um, you have to prepare yourself or your students uh, for an exchange in, in the very beginning. Uh, so in the very beginning of, uh, if we're speaking about the incomings arriving, this is the upon arrival training. Uh, then if you're a student, you have to follow up on your success. And if you are the, the local officer or national officer, you have to follow up. And, uh, and for this, handbook or, and, and or logbook can help you. Uh, and when you analyze and, uh, the results of your own work of the, or of the work of the students, uh, by uh, creating the outcomes of the exchange, uh, the exchange of the most useful experiences in your life, at least in your students' life. So be careful and take into consideration everything that we meant uh, in the web uh, in the very beginning, uh, from the very beginning. And next slide, please. Uh, now we have time for questions and answers. Uh, and thank you for the questions you have already. So now you have a time to send, uh, to send questions if you have more of them. In the meantime, we will answer those that uh, have already been asked to us. So the first question which we saw was um, uh, the ABC of bioethics. Actually, it was not uh, exactly the topic of our webinar today, but since the ethics uh, training can be uh, the part of the appointment, uh, we can answer you uh, a bit about this. So uh, to be honest, there can be more letters in the um, in the uh, memorizing the ethical principles, so it's uh, A, B, C, D, E, and A stays for uh, autonomy. Uh, so uh, physicians must respect, uh, or students must respect uh, a patient's right to make a decision regarding uh, his or her medical care. So uh, the decision is made by this uh, patient herself. B is beneficians, uh, so uh, doctors and students must act in the best interest of their patients. Uh, C is for confidentiality, so uh, the information can only be shared with the uh, patient with those uh, uh, closest relatives of the patient, uh, which uh, the patient him or herself has established to, so uh, to those people uh, who uh, the patient trusts. D goes for harm. Uh, other way, um, the other principle is no non maleficence and this is one of the most important principles for the incoming student. Uh, so, student has to always remember that the most important thing for him or her is to do no patient. So, uh, this should be uh, very self uh, confident just and the skills that he or she has and has to not be, uh, has to never be afraid of saying that she has never done any, uh, some procedure because the health uh, of the patient stays on the first place. Then E goes for E. Uh, this is about the distributing uh, of the medical care uh, usually and fairness and F stays for Fairness, so uh, doctors be always uh, fair with their patients, and uh, all the information should be uh, shared. Uh, ease. Uh, so that was for the question about ABC of the uh, ethical principles. Then, uh, what we have next? Uh, can you further explain who exactly prints uh, the case report? Will there be a general layout made by IFMSA, and we all should follow? Um, so, uh, about this is about the uh, student's report, as I can understand. Oh, case report is, I think, about the clinical case report. So, um, for now, initiative of SCOPI, so it's not the strict uh, rule that every student has to have. Uh, and for now, this is the volunteer, so this is the recommended uh, thing to do, but not the um, not a must for the outgoing student. 
uh, for now we don't have any uh, strict templates uh, everything can just be done by the student the only thing that uh, is recommended uh, to mind is to follow the structure of the clinical case report but this is the beginning and as I've already mentioned the email about this will be sent to the new server uh, soon to share this in her news and to uh, get the input from news as well uh, and uh, all the news will receive the uh, instructions on how to uh, take into consideration the clinical case report. If we speak about the student's report, the general student's report, for now there are also no uh, general layouts or templates. Uh, as you've seen, uh, they can just be written the word, uh, word uh, Microsoft Word uh, format, and then uh, after transforming it into PDF, it can be uploaded to the database. Um, I hope I answered your question. If you have more, you can always ask uh, again. Then uh, the next question, uh, the handbook and what does he do later? Take it to Dean uh, and what are the following steps? And can we own pharmacy form or should we have a special form for our any uh so according to the regulation uh, to the scope of regulations uh the um thing to fill in is the official uh scopy or scory uh handbook or look. so uh to get the uh, student certificate the uh, fmc certificate about the exchange the student has to fill out the I have to say official uh, handbook or logbook. Uh, and yes, Jorgos has explained the steps in the uh, middle of the webinar about uh, what should the student do with the handbook. I can repeat. So yes, the students, uh, student prints the, uh, prints the uh, handbook or logbook and then go with it to the dean uh, because there is the place where he can also leave his or her prints uh, on she expects from the student to do during the clerkship uh, and the following steps the student arrives to the um, exchange and uh, if you uh, if you we watch the webinar later and go uh, to exactly to the point where uh, Jorges has explained the steps or you can always contact me personally and I, I can explain it to you personally to whoever person so uh, if do you have any more questions guys I assume that we don't have any questions I'm not forgetting to answer any of your questions so okay Mania, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, yes, if you have any doubts about um, the previous topics that we have discussed, you can always contact the members of your international te uh, teams. So uh, for SCORI, it's the SCORI international team. So basic regional assistance, uh, especially for the topics that we have discussed, uh, it's always better to call regional assistance. And the same goes about the SCORI team. And uh, your regional assistant will always be happy to answer your questions and uh, to explain more about um, if you're unsure about something. And next slide, please. And uh, this is uh, actually all to say you in the end is uh, don't forget that this is not the only uh, webinar that we have uh, that we had. Uh, please check on the webinars for uh, the, uh, there was the webinar for the pre-departure training as well. If you have the pre-departure training yet, uh, have a look at that webinar. It's also very useful. And there was the one one in the very beginning, uh, like in uh, this, in November. And Scory has even more uh, webinars. So uh, don't hesitate to watch the webinars again. Uh, and don't uh, don't hesitate to contact us whenever it is needed. And we want to say thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you for attending the webinar. Thank you for asking the questions, and thank you for making this experience a bit funnier and better.
and goodbye to everyone. And yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hermania, thank you, Laura, Jorgas, and at this point, you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.